myself govin negro and i welcome you all to the video lecture series on the course named problem solving and programming in c in this session we will learn what are strings in c and various operations that can be performed on them this is the part 4 of the hands on session on arrays wherein i will be showing you various programs that use strings so without waiting further let's get started first we will learn about what are strings in c a string is a sequenced collection of characters what do you mean by a sequenced collection the characters are represented one after the other in a sequenced fashion hence a string can also be defined as an array of characters now you might be asking since they are just an array of characters in the previous session we had seen in depth about one dimensional arrays then why did we did not study strings in the previous sessions the answer is because strings are special case of one dimensional character array wherein they are handled differently the reason is they have to be handled differently because it will be highly impractical to ask the user the number of characters that are there in the string and then ask the user to enter the string because as we noted this was the normal behavior in the programs on one dimensional arrays we first entered the size of the array then we entered the number of elements in it this will be a highly ir ir irrealistic approach because when we are handling with strings we usually tend to store the name of a particular entity or a person as a string so before entering the string it is highly illogical to ask the number of characters in the string and then go ahead with the entering of the string hence strings in c are specified as a special case of one dimensional character arrays for example if i consider a string named hello the one dimensional array representation of hello is shown as below you can see here each element in this string h e l l o is specified as a separate element of the array so all the no notions or notations that we saw in the previous sessions on representation of arrays also hold true so indexing also starts from zero followed by each array is given with normal name and in this case each element of the array is a character array hence we call this as a string but what you observe is at the end there is a special character called null character which is referred to as backslash zero so each element of a string is a character end of the string is represented by a special character called backslash zero so this is how the problem of not asking number of characters in the string before entering the string is solved so always when the string is said to be terminated or it has reached the end only when you have backslash zero we will see how to use backslash zero as end of string character in the further slides a pair of single quote is used to represent character constants you might observe here when i have specified hello i am writing this hello in double quotes but when i represent the hello in the array representation form i have written each elements of the array which is which are character constants itself called h e l l o as a pair of single quotes because a series of characters form strings and strings are represented with a pair of double quotes and each character in that string can be represented with a pair of single quotes this is because in c character constants are represented by a pair of single quotes and string constants are represented by a pair of double quotes it is very important at this stage to note that there is no built in data type called string in c this is in sharp contrast with other high level programming languages like python wherein it has a direct data type called string so strings handling in such program languages is very trivial however in c since there is no special data type or built in data type called string 
we have to handle the strings in a special way as one dimensional character arrays so all the representations that we saw with respect to one dimensional array also holds true with respect to strings next we will see the initialization of strings as strings are one dimensional character arrays similar to 1d arrays on integer and floating data types we have two types of initialization they are compile time initialization and runtime initialization as studied earlier compile time initialization is a type of initialization wherein the values to the strings or values to the one dimensional array are entered during the program editing or during compile time and in runtime initialization the values to the array are entered during when the program is being run this is how the compile time initialization of strings looks like as we might notice here in fact this type of representation was already considered in the video wherein we had studied the one dimensional array initialization using compile time initialization technique I had also told you that I will be discussing the special case of one dimensional character arrays as strings in the further session. You can see here this type of compile time initialization is a bit cumbersome because if the number of characters that we are interested in storing in a string is huge, say around 40 to 50 characters, we need to write individual characters of the string as if it's a array form. So just to type the string for compile time initialization, which has only four to five elements. For each element, we need to use a pair of single quotes and then type the character followed by comma. This we need to repeat it till we reach the backslash zero. Backslash zero acts as the termination character for the string. So this is a very cumbersome approach. There is a simple approach also, which is shown over here. So the same compile time initialization can also be written this way wherein I just need to use a pair of double quote and embed the text inside the double quote. Note that when we use a pair of double quotes backslash zero need not be used. So this spares us from the difficulty of writing individual characters at a time as if they are array of elements and then appending with backslash zero. Remember if you do not append this with the backslash zero in the first type of compile time initialization of strings, then string handling will become difficult. Hence, to overcome that problem, we use second type of compile time initialization of strings. We will now see the runtime initialization of strings. What does runtime initialization mean? It refers to reading the string during program execution. There are in fact various ways in which we can do this. This sample code snippet shows one of the way to read a string. This is the simplest form of reading a string wherein I am using scanf. We use a special format specifier called percentage %s to store the string directly into a character array. Note that here the ampersand symbol after comma is missing. That is because array is a derived type and we don't store the value of only one character variable into the string. We store all the character elements into the string at once. That's the reason we do not use ampersand symbol. This is one form of reading an array easily. The problem with this scanf is that it stops reading the string when it encounters a white space. What is a white space? It includes a set of spaces, a set of tabs, and a set of new lines. Suppose I want to read my name using this scanf. Say my name is Govind space Negrur. So if I try to do this with scanf, what will happen is when it encounters a space, the word Negrur will not be stored in this string. So it stops reading the string when it encounters a white space. How do you solve this problem? We use one function which is available in string.h header file called fgets. S here means it is something to do with strings. Get means read. So if get s function can be used to read a line of text and store it as a string. So this string can store or hold at most 19 elements because the last element will be reserved for backslash zero. So this is one more important point to be remembered while 
while using strings actual elements in the string will be always one less than the number that is specified here so in general the number of elements in the string is one less than the size of the string to accommodate backslash zero so the advantage of using f get s is that it can read a line of text so it stops reading when it encounters a new line you can also read a series of spaces as well as tabs with this syntax i can easily read my name govin space neglor and successfully store it in the string str we can also read a string as if it is a one dimensional character array so this is shown in the third code here you can see we are storing the individual elements of the array or individual elements of the string as if it's a array we have created a string with a size 20 and in each iteration of the do while loop we are reading one character at a time from the keyboard so i'm using percentage c and using scanf function and to read one character at a time and that red character i am storing it here and increment i because i need to build the array using the index and check whether that character is not equal to backslash zero so here this code demonstrates the use of do while so when the key entered from the keyboard is backslash zero i come out we can also use one character called eof to signify the end of character so when the null character is encountered we automatically come out of the that character you store it in the string and come out of the do while loop so this is the hard way of reading a string however this approach is still used in problems where we require low level operation of the strings so this is a preferred approach for problems that involve high level handling of strings we can use the first and the second approach to read the strings having seen these three sample code snippets we will now go to fedora and see how these approaches can be used to read the string i am now in fedora operating system i will be writing the programs for reading the strings using those three approaches which were shown in the previous slide let us get started i am going to name this file as read string 1 here i'll be using scanf to read the string and display it onto the screen int main i'm going to name one string and call it i'm going to call it a str and i'll specify the size as 20 i'll ask the user enter your name percentage s str now i have entered the name i'm going to print it your name is percentage s backslash n str return 0 compile it run it i'm going to enter my name so you can see here when i enter the name and press enter my name is displayed i'm going to now show you whether the scanf will read a space so you can see here after my name i have left one space so let's see what is the content that is stored in the string called str as you can see here my surname which is negro is not printed as stated previously scanf stops reading when it encounters a white space so to overcome this problem we use as stated earlier get s function let me now write the code that demonstrates the use of get s get s function is available in string.h so i will include string.h header file i'll write main i use string called str printf enter your name get s str this is a syntax for get s the string that you want to store into that string should be passed as an argument to get s then after entering the string your name is percentage s backslash n comma str let us now see the output of this you need to remember one thing in linux when you use get s function you will get a warning called the get s function is dangerous and it should not be used since it's a warning it poses no risk to the program you can still go ahead with the compilation it is just that 
compiler treats that the usage of get s is dangerous if your application is having a concern with respect to security however in our case we are not dealing with any security aspects of the program hence we can as well ignore this warning and still can use get s function let us now run this program now i am going to enter the name with the space you can see here it is taking the spaces i can also enter after my space set of tabs you can still see it is taking those spaces as well as tabs hence this proves the fact that get s function stops reading only when it encounters a new line having seen the programs to read the string we will now see what are the various operations that can be performed on strings there are several operations that can be performed on strings few of the commonly performed operations on strings are finding the length of the string copying one string into another concatenation of strings comparison of strings reversing a string these are not the only operations that can be performed on strings there are many operations which can be performed on the strings few of the important ones are only depicted here we will be discussing each of these operations in detail so we will first start with the finding the length of the string what do you mean by finding the length of the string finding the length of the string refers to the number of characters that are available in the string without the null character which is backslash zero there is one built in function available in string.h header file called strlen that can be used to calculate the length of a given string very easily now what if i don't want to use strlen and still want to write a program to find the length of the string it means i want to implement my own version of strlen function how can this be done so how do i find the length of a string is actually explained in a form of animation let us have a look into it let's assume that str is a string the content of this string is h e l l o followed by backslash zero so each element of the string is being represented with a character constant hence i have represent them with a pair of single quotes and end of the string is represented by backslash zero which refers to the point where the string stops so my string is hello so what should be the length of the string so how many characters are there without backslash zero h e l l o so there are totally five characters in the string hence the length of the string should be five but if you notice in the one dimensional character array called str there are actually six elements but for finding the length of the string we should not consider this last element backslash zero because if we consider backslash zero it becomes highly irrealistic so the length of the string is the number of characters in the string without backslash zero character so let us see how can we do this manually for this i need one counter called as length so let the initial value of the counter be zero first i will compare the first element of the string str or the element at the index zero whether is it equal to backslash zero if it is not equal to backslash zero i will increment the counter so length counter becomes one i'll again check with the next element the element at the first index or second position i'll check whether it is equal to backslash zero if it is not equal to backslash zero increment the count so length becomes 2 try to do the same thing with the third element again it is not equal to backslash 0 increment the count length becomes 3 again do the same thing with respect to the element at the fourth position or third index again it is not equal to backslash 0 so increment it by 1 again compare the next element again it is not equal to backslash 0 so length becomes 5 next you compare the last element of this string which is the fifth index element or sixth position of the string and this time it is equal to zero so you should stop so what will be my length of this string obviously the length of the string will be five so i should stop when i reach backslash zero and return the counter value that is available at that moment so here the counter value is length equal to five so this is how we try to find the length of a string now we'll switch to fedora operating system and try to write the program to implement finding the length of the string first we'll see how to quickly calculate the length of the string using strlen then we'll modify the program to calculate the length of the string using 
this approach that is discussed now. So let us switch on to Fedora operating system. I will now write a program to find the length of the string. So I'll name this as string length. Dot C. First, I will show the program to find the length of the string using the built-in function which is available in string.h. Int main cap str. I am going to demonstrate the runtime initialization of the string. So enter your name backslash n. I am using get s function str and to print the length of the string using built-in function it is very easy. So you take one integer variable called length initialize it to 0 then you write length equal to strlen of str so how does this strlen works it takes the string for which you want to compute the length of the string as an argument and returns the length of the string associated with this value so if I type my name, so it will return the number of characters in my name. So let us see how it works. So that I can directly print length of string or length of percentage s e percentage d backslash n. So I want to print my name followed by the length. Also remember get s automatically appends backslash 0 at the end and it stops reading only when it encounters backslash n. I'm going to compile this and I aware I am aware that I'll get a warning called get a Caesar function which is dangerous and should not be used. I'll still go ahead with the execution. So I'm going to enter my name and press enter. You can now see the length of this name is 6 G O V I N D. So it has not counted the backslash 0. I'm going to enter my complete name you can see it is now printing 14 and also you might notice even it considers space as the for counting the length of the string. We will modify the same program to see whether the program works without using strlen. So I am going to delete this statement and according to the animation that we saw it requires i as a variable then I will navigate using a for loop. I can also use while loop. I think while loop would be better. While str of i not equal to backslash 0. So I am going to navigate this, this string till it reaches backslash 0. So when it reaches backslash 0, it comes out. And I need to increment length, length plus plus. And also I need to increment i, the index i. So this is the program. So in each iteration of the while loop, the length gets incremented and before the next iteration begins the i will point to the next index element of the string so this is demonstrated in the animation clearly so i'm going to compile this now and see whether it works so i'm going to give the same input go in you can see it is printing six i'm going to run this this time with a space and negloot you can see here it is now printing 14 so both the output of this 6 and 14 is now same as this program so what does it mean we have as good as implemented the function named strlen in our logic so this is the implementation of the function called strlen we will now move on to seeing what do you mean by string copy so copy string copy means copying the content of one string into another to do this we have in string.h header file a function named strcpy here cpy represents copy str represents string so str copy built-in function can be used to copy the contents of one string into another so as the name suggests string copy requires you to have two strings in the first string you must have the elements into the string and in the second string all the elements of the first string are copied remember if the first string is empty it will be copied with the new content and if the string already has a content it will be overwritten with the new content let us see how this works with an animation let us again use the same string which was considered previously hello as a string now this time i am calling it as s1 how this logic works is i have now 
new string called s2 i am going to copy the contents of each element of s1 till it encounters backslash 0 so first i am going to copy the element at zeroth index which is h and copy it in s2 followed by s1 first element first index e followed by l again followed by l followed by o next when i encounter z backslash 0 i should not copy the backslash 0 into s2 so i should stop navigating the string s1 so how does the logic looks like i need to copy the ith element of s1 into ith element of s2 till i reach backslash 0 of s1 so after i do this at the string s2 i need to add an explicit backslash 0 at the end i will now demonstrate the program to copy one string into another i'm going to name it as string to copy dot h first i will demonstrate the copy copy of the string using the built-in function which is available in string dot h int main char s1 let the size of the s1 be 20 even the size of s2 be 20. it is important to note that when the content of s1 is copied to s2 the same elements are copied to S2. So the size of S2 should be equal to the content of S1. Now I'm going to ask the user, enter the string S1. I'm going to use get S, S1, str cpy, S1, S2. I'm copying the content of S1 into S2. So it should be S2, S1. So how does str cpy works? The content of s1 gets copied to s2 the content that is specified as a second argument which is s1 is copied into the content which is specified in the first argument which is s2 let us now see printf copied content in s2 is percentage s backslash 0 s2 let us see whether we are able to copy the content properly or not compile it run it you can see the content in S1 is Govind and now the content that is copied in S2 is also Govind. Since I used get S function, I can also try to copy the white spaces. You can see here, now S2 also contains Govind space negro. Now we'll try to write or modify this same program to not to use strcpy, but to use the logic that was demonstrated in the animation, the slides. For this, we require a variable called i so i will navigate the each element of the s1 till i encounter backslash 0 then i will copy the content of s1 into s2 so copy the each element of s1 into s2 so in general we refer it as copy the ith element of s1 into ith element of s2 till we reach backslash 0 I just need to increment i after this and when I reach backslash 0 I would have come out so it is very essential to append backslash 0 at the end of s2 because if you observe carefully or if you trace this logic this loop will not add backslash 0 at the end of s2 and if you do not add backslash 0 at the end of s2 this is not considered as a valid string so you will print some garbage values if this happens so to overcome this problem we need to append backslash 0 at the end of s2 so how do i do it since this logic doesn't do it after the after this logic comes out i need to do it manually so i'll just write s2 of i equal to backslash 0 because when the logic comes out I would be pointing to the next element and we will be point we will be just copying the backslash 0 at that element let us see whether this logic works properly or not compile i'm going to enter the string as govind you can see the same string has been entered of course there is a spelling mistake you can just ignore that the same string has been copied again i'm going to enter this time with a space you can now notice you have or you are able to also print the space now i will show you what happens if you delete this means if i comment this backslash 0 let us see what happens 
because this logic doesn't add backslash zero at the end of S2. So let us see what happens when I do it. Again, I'm going to compile this, run it. You can now see after the end of the string D, you are able to print some non-printable ASCII characters because the size of the string is 20. And when it encounters backslash zero, printf stops displaying the elements after the backslash zero to signify that the end, the string has been ended. But here we have not yet appended backslash zero. Hence, it is printing some garbage values. In fact, they are not garbage values. They are non-printable ASCII characters. From the perspective of the user, we can refer these values as garbage values. Again, I am run this. This time it space. You can now see again you are able to print some garbage values or some non-printable ASCII characters. So this is the effect or this is a problem if you do not append backslash zero at the end. So what is the solution? When you are modifying the string manually, one element at a time, it is the programmer's responsibility to add backslash zero at the end. Otherwise, you will start getting garbage values. I'll compile this. Now you will get the proper answer. Next, we will see what do you mean by string concatenation? String concatenation refers to attaching or adding one string into the end of another string. What's the difference between string concatenation and string copy? In string copy, we will copy the entire content of the first string into second. However, in string concatenation, we are attaching one string into end of the another string. There is one built-in function called strcat, which is available again in a string.h header file, which can be used to concatenate one string into another string very easily. Here, few points need to be remembered. The length of the concatenated string will be increased after the concatenation. So now we'll see the working of string concatenation. This animation will help us to develop a logic to concatenate two strings without using strcat as a built-in string handling function. Let us see the animation. I have one string called s1. Again, this string is taken from the previous example. The content of this string s1 is hello. We have one more string called s2. This time the content of s2 is world. What I am interested here is in I want to concatenate S2 with S1. What do you mean by that? I want to increase the length of S1. So after backslash zero of hello, I want to attach that world to the string S1. This is what we refer it to as string concatenation. Let us see how this can be done. First, to do this, first navigate the string S1 till backslash zero is reached. So I'm not going to modify the string S1 till backslash zero of the original content of S1 is reached. So I'm simply going to navigate by starting from I equal to zero till I less than I not equal to backslash zero, H E L L O. So when I reach backslash zero, what I'm supposed to do? I need to copy, I need to start copy each element of S2 into S1 by replacing backslash zero. So now in this case, I have reached O, which is the character which is previous to backslash zero, I should now start copying the content of S2 till I reach the backslash zero of S2 and copy it into S1. So the first element at S2, which is at the index zero of S2 is W that gets copied in S1. Next followed by O, followed by R, followed by L, followed by D. And when I reach backslash zero, I should stop copying. And since I have modified S1 manually, it is our responsibility to add backslash zero to S1 at the end. So I will add backslash zero at the end. So how can I generalize this logic? So you need to copy the element of S2 into S1 till S2 is element at S2 is not equal to backslash zero. So till S2 of J not equal to backslash zero, I should copy the Jth element of S2 to Ith element of S1. But there is a caution over here. In this I, you should have already navigated from hello. You have, you should, that I should have already reached backslash zero. And at the end, since it is our responsibility to copy the backslash zero. So I am just going to put backslash zero 
at S1 at the index position IP. So you can now notice originally the length, the number of characters available in S1 including backslash 0 were 6 H E L L O and followed by backslash 0. After concatenation, the length has been increased. That's why I am using I plus J to copy the backslash 0 for S1. We will now try to write the program. I will now demonstrate the program for string concatenation. I am going to name it as string underscore concat dot C. This time, first I will demonstrate this with using built in function. So I am including string dot h int main char s1 and s2. So you should keep it in mind that the if you are concatenating s2 with s1, the length of the s1 should be obviously higher than the s2. So I'll restrict s2 as only 10. Print f enter s1. I'm using scanf percentage s s1. Next I will also ask from the user enter s2. Scanf percentage s s2. Then I'm going to use a function called strcat. How this function works? The element at s2 which is specified as second argument is copied to the element as is, is concatenated or appended to the end of the original string s1 so some of the programming languages like python they directly support this with this equation it is just that you just need to write this so string concatenation can easily be written like this so how does this looks like it is simply addition of two strings and store the added string into S1. However, this is unfortunately not possible in C because as already stated, string is not a built-in data type in C. Hence, we have to go for some of the built-in functions to achieve this result or I, we need to develop our own logic to implement such operations. Next, let me try to print the content of S1. S1 equal to percentage S backslash and s1 return 0 compile it i'm going to clear the stri screen string concat.c since i used uh, scanf i'm not getting any warnings here so i'll now enter hello i'll enter as world you can see here now the concatenated string content is hello world now we'll try to write the same program or modify the same program without using the built-in function called strcat so for this we require two variables i and j as seen in the animation i equal to 0 comma j equal to 0. First I need to navigate the elements of s1 till I reach backslash 0. So for this I will use one while loop s1 of i not equal to backslash 0 you just need to do i plus plus. What you can notice here is instead of using while loop it becomes very easy for me to use for loop at this scenario so let me try using the for loop instead of while or you can notice i'll start from i equal to 0 s1 of i not equal to backslash 0 then i plus plus and also now you can notice there is no body of this for this for loop so since this for loop doesn't have any body this is identified or this is specified in C with the semicolon. So here a semicolon for while loop or for loop means that there is no body for that particular loop. So please keep this in mind. Semicolon refers to no body for the loop. No body of the loop. So if you if in the problem definition if you don't have any content to be written inside the body of that loop, you can just specify a semicolon. Here I am introducing semicolon de deliberately. So what I have done after this statement, I would have navigated all the elements of S1 till I have reached backslash 0. Next, I need to navigate the element at S2 till I reach the backslash 0 of S2. So what I am supposed to do? I am supposed to copy the 
jth element of s2 into ith element of s1 because assignment operator is from right to left i need to copy the jth element of s2 to ith element of s1 and also you may you will notice i need to increment both i and j so this is specified with commas so if there are multiple initializations or multiple increments that are to be specified in this header of the for you need to specify it with commas remember you don't have multiple test conditions to be written here if you want to write multiple test conditions you need to use logical operators since i need to increment i as well as j i am specifying this with a comma so at the end of this loop i would have attached the content of s2 or appended the content of s2 with s1 now i need to just put the element of element called backslash 0 because i have modified the string s1 at i let us see whether it works or not i am now going to compile this program string underscore concat dot c run it i will write hello as first string world as second string you can notice now s1 is concatenated with hello world i can also do this same thing with respect to my name govind negalur you can see now s1 is appended with the negalur so entire s1 the size of s1 has been increased so this is about string concatenation next we will see one of the most important operation with respect to string is string comparison and when we are studying it for the first time this is the most confusing aspect of string operations so let us see this carefully what is string comparison it's about comparing two strings so whether two strings are equal or whether two strings are not equal so this is in simple terms mean by string comparison string comparison refers to comparing two strings one element at a time for equality the string comparison compares two strings one element at a time for equality there is a built in function available again in string.h called strcmp wherein cmp refers to compare str refers to string which can be used to compare two strings now we'll have a quick look into how does strcmp works so how to compare two strings first compare two strings element wise starting from first character till both strings are equal or backslash zero character is encountered so we need to start comparing the two strings element wise so first element of the first string will be compared with the first element of the second string if it is equal try to compare the next element of the first string with the next element of the second string until till both strings are equal or backslash character is encountered then we must return a value of 0 when all characters in both strings are found as same now what if two strings are not same then in that case we need to return a value which is positive or greater than 0 when the first unmatching character in the first string has higher ascii value then the corresponding character in the second string what do we mean by this i will be explaining this in the further slide as an animation so that it becomes easier for us to understand the meaning of this second or this bullet we also have one more possible value as a return type for string compare which is a value of less than 0 so a value of less than 0 is returned when the first unmatching character in the first string has smaller ascii value than corresponding character in the second string so string compare function is bit complex to understand because based on whether the two strings are same or not it can return you three values the first value it can return is 0 this value 0 is return if and only if both the strings are same what do you mean by both strings are same you cannot use double equal to operator to compare two strings because string is not a built in data type rather i need to compare the two strings element wise so it returns zero only when both strings are same what do you mean by that all characters in both strings element wise are same let us try to understand these three statements that is value equal to zero value being positive and value being less than zero being returned by str cmp with some proper animations so first let us see i have a first string called sdm ct remember strings are case sensitive so capital case and small case 
do matter with when comparing the strings so i have now a string called stmct written in all capital letters i also have one more string called s2 which also contains stmct all in capital letters now just by looking into this intuitively or visually we already know that both strings are same according to this the str cmp should return zero how this is performed is what we are going to see now so the first element of s1 is compared with second element of first element of s2 so it's nothing but compare the ith element of s1 with jth element of s2 if it is same go for the next element or till you reach backslash 0 so compare the first element of s1 with first element of s2 s2 in this case both are capital s so they are equal because it is equal you compare the next element even this next element d is same in both strings so it is equal since it is equal go for the next element 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 equal so till how many times you do this you encounter backslash 0 so when i reach backslash 0 and all the elements of s1 and s2 are equal then you conclude that both strings are same and hence a value of 0 is returned of course you need not compare backslash 0 with backslash 0 it's of no need so this is how string comparison works if the strings are same now we'll see the second example wherein i have taken s1 as sdm cvt here observe uh, two changes are been done with respect to the previous animation c and t are in small case letters in this string the second string s2 is retained as same so let us see how the comparison proceeds again i have to compare jth element of s2 with ith element of s1 so compare the first element of s1 with first element of s2 since it is equal go for the next d is also equal m is also equal now what about c now the first element c in s1 is not same as c in s2 because s c in s1 is in small case and c in s2 is in capital case so what happens this comparison fails now what does this mean this is what we refer to it as first unmatched character so in this case after the third position in the fourth position s1 and s2 strings is not same so what value to be returned by str cmp is what we are going to see we can notice now the difference between the c and capital c value is what going to be returned so what is the ascii value of uh, small c what happens is small c minus capital c is 32 why it is because the ascii value of small c is 99 and ascii value of capital c is 67 so 99 minus 67 is 32 hence 32 is returned when these two strings are compared so what is 32 32 is positive value so in this case a positive value is returned so what is the meaning of positive value if the first unmatched character in the first string has greater ascii value compared to the first unmatched character in the second string so c in the s1 has higher ascii value than s2 hence a positive value of 32 is written if you are able to understand understand this the third return value which is negative becomes very easy to understand let us have a look into it now s1 all is in small case letters and also notice even s2 all in small case but content is different instead of stm ct we have stm cse s is compared with again s d with compared with d which is same m is also compared with m which is same c is compared with c which is same now e is compared with s which is not same so what is the difference between e minus s which is minus 14 how because ascii value of e is 101 and ascii value of s is 115 hence a negative value is written what is the meaning of negative value the first unmatched character in the first string has lesser or smaller ascii value than the first unmatched character of s2 so these are three possible scenarios in which string comparison can be implemented 
we will now see the program that can be used to demonstrate or implement string compare i will now write the program compares to two strings string compare dot c first i will use built in function to demonstrate string copy this is available in string dot h int main i have two strings s1 followed by s2 and we want to compare them print f enter s1 and f percentage s s1 print f enter s2 backslash n and f percentage s s2 so we'll check the return value of string compare so for that i i need one variable called integer type so i'll call it as say l so let l represents the return value of string compare so i'll write l equal to str cmp s1 comma s2 after this i'm going to print the return value of l return value of string compare is percentage d backslash n l return 0 let us run this code I'll clear the screen i will run the program now i'll enter two strings which are same sdmct sdmct you can see the return value of string compare is zero now let me enter the string the first string i'll enter it as sdm cet this was the string that was taken as an example in the slides i'll now enter sdm cet all in capital letters what had happened was according to our analysis uh, it will since the first unmatching character of the first string is greater than the ascii value of this is greater than the second first unmatching character of the second string it should return 32 or positive value let us see what value it returns as you can clearly notice it is not showing 32 rather it is showing 1 because string compare function which is built in in c is designed to just return 1 or positive value one is obviously a positive value it is designed to return a positive value if the first unmatching character in the first string is higher than corresponding unmatching character in the second string now let us see what happens if i enter this output stm c e t all in small case stm c s e now in this case small e and capital s are the first unmatching characters let us see the return value of this you can see now it is returning minus 1 so this is a bit different than what we saw in the animations however the one that was that was seen in the animations is more accurate but in string compare implementation in c it is this function is just designed to return a negative 1 or positive 1 or 0 i have now modified this program and removed the strcmp function and implemented the strcmp function let us have a look into it you can now see the previous program we had used a variable called l now instead of l i have taken it as a value equal to zero what is the meaning of value being zero it means the assumption we are assuming here that so i'm going to write it here value equal to zero means that our assumption is strings are equal so during my logic i will try to make this condition false so if one of the character in the first string is greater or smaller than the unmatching character in the second string then i will update the value from 1 0 to 1 or minus 1 according to the string compare definition so here i am first checking the length of the string i am storing it as l1 so using the built-in function strln i am first checking the length of the first string and also i am storing the length of the second string i will check whether the length of the first string is equal to the is not equal to the length of the second string so if this is true i can directly print that strings are not equal but what if the strings are equal in that case i will check for the i'll start with the for loop i will check this test condition how this test condition works is now we know that the length of the strings are same because 
if this condition is false it means both the strings must be of the same length so i am going to check if one of the string reaches the end of its string then the logic or this test condition will come out so when does this for loop comes out only when one of the strings reach their end that is when this condition s1 of i becomes equal to backslash 0 or s2 of j becomes equal to backslash 0 so inside this body of the for loop what i am checking i am checking if the first unmatched character in the first string is greater than the first unmatched character in the second string in this case what will happen as we saw in the animation it should ideally return the difference between the ascii value so it will return a positive value so this we are signifying with plus 1 and once i know that the i have reached a first unmatched character obviously strings cannot be same so i am going to use break which will come out of the loop i just need to check one more condition wherein s1 of i is less than s2 of j what does this mean it means the first unmatched character in the first string is less than the first unmatched character in the second string so the ascii value difference will be obviously negative so according to the implementation of string compare we know that it will return minus 1 so i am setting the value to minus 1 and then coming out of the for loop and i know that if the strings are equal both of this if condition would not become true at all during the entire processing of this loop hence the value equal to 0 will remain as it is so after coming out of the for loop i am checking for the value whether it is equal to 0 if it is indeed equal to 0 i am printing that strings are equal otherwise strings are not equal and i am coming out of the else and coming out of the main so let us see how this program works we will try to input all possible combinations here first i will enter both strings which are same obviously it prints strings are equal next i will enter sdm c as small capital e and small t and this time i am going to enter stm ct all in capital letter so in the first string the first unmatched character is small c in the second string the first unmatched character is capital c so the difference will be obviously positive because small case letters have higher ascii value than the small capital case counterparts and indeed as we saw in the animation the difference is 32 and also we saw string compare doesn't give you 32 rather it gives plus 1 so it is saying strings are not equal of course there is a spelling mistake here then i am going to enter one more string sdm cet and second string is sdm csc here the first unmatching character is small e with capital s so obviously capital s is higher having higher ascii value than the small e so it should return negative but the program should print strings are not equal and and as you can see strings are not equal there is one more special case to be considered here what about this input you can see here the in the first string there is no unmatched character in the second string because when the first string terminates all the three characters s is matched with the first s d is matched with d m is matched with d in this case the program should print strings are not equal that is because the length of the string is not same as you can recollect from the program we have already handled this condition so you can see here it is printing strings are not equal so this program is the complete implementation of the string compare function not the exact we will now see the last operation that can be performed on a string which is reversing a string there is one built-in function in string.h header file called strrev function available which can be used to reverse a string what do you mean by reversing a string as the name itself implies let's assume that the string is s1 and the content of the string is hello reversing a string means i'll start from the letter o because we should not copy the backslash zero because if we able to copy the backslash zero as the first character then that's the end of the string itself so i have two strings s1 and s2 i should copy the last but one character which is o and call it as the first element of s2 similarly copy l and store it as second element of s2 
again copy l store it as third element of s2 copy e store it as fourth element of s2 and copy h and store it as last element of s2 after this you should stop processing the string s1 and stop copying the string s2 and since i have now modified string s2 it is my responsibility to add backslash 0 remember in the string comparison we did not add backslash 0 because we have not modified the string always remember whenever you are modifying a string a particular string it is your responsibility to add backslash 0 at the end so how will this logic look like till s1 of i not equal to 0 copy the ith element of s1 into jth element of s2 and at the end copy backslash 0 to the jth element of s now we'll try to write a program to reverse a string here a word of caution even though in the slide i have told you that strrev is a built-in function available in string.h to reverse a string unfortunately strrev function is not part of the standard gcc compiler version hence strrev is not supported in linux operating system so i will now write a program to reverse a string without using strrev you can just check the syntax of strrev from the internet sources it is very easy to use so for that i require two strings s1 and the content of s1 will be reversed and copied in s2 for this i require some integer variables i equal to 0 j equal to 0 and for this i require the length of the first string also so i call it as n print printf enter s1 backslash n get s s1 next i will now start reversing the string before that i require the length of the string so i use strln to let to get to know the length of s1 now the last but one element should be copied to the zeroth element of s2 for doing this i will start with the for loop i'll start from i equal to n minus 1 also i should start from j equal to 0 because the n minus first element should be copied to the zeroth element of s2 and i should keep on incrementing j and keep on decrementing i so i should stop when i becomes greater than or equal to 0 it means when i goes less than 0 so this is my stopping condition and i will increment j i will i will decrement i followed by increment j now what i am supposed to do i am just supposed to copy the element at n minus 1 and paste it in or copy it in s2 and after this i need to put backslash 0 at the end let us see whether the string has been reversed reverse string is percentage s backslash n s2 return 0 compile it you might notice i am getting some warning since i have not declared string dot h i am getting this error so i am going to declare string dot h this will solve this first error uh, the first warning i will now enter my name you can see now it is the program is now printing the reverse of this name which is starts from d n i v o g this works since i am using get s function it also works for spaces so i am entering my name with a space you can see it totally reverses individual characters in the string and then gets stored in s2 now having seen various programs on strings i am now giving you some suggested activities which you can try it the first suggested activity is you can try to write the return values of the following string comparisons assume that in the first case the first string is csc space department dept and the second string is csc dept try to find the return value of str cmp the second string is csc department however d is small and csc department d is capital so try to find the return value of this string comparison csc department versus csc department in the second string all csc dept csc is in small case dept is in capital case however in the first string csc is in capital case dept is in small case 
write a C program to reverse a string and store it in the same string. This you can try it as an exercise, suggested activity. You can also try to write a C program to convert a string from lower case to upper case and vice versa. You need to follow a note. If input string is SDM CT, wherein SDM is in capital case and CT is in small case, then the output should be printed as the reverse, which is SDM should be in small case letter and CT should be in capital case letter. We can also try to write a C program to print the number of OLs and consonants in a string. Again, we need to follow a note. If string is SDM CET, comma CAC department, then the program should print the number of OLs as 3 and number of consonants as 10. The last two programs are very simple. You just need to process the strings and depending on which ASCII value the string characters lies, you just need to categorize them accordingly. So please try them as suggested activity. With this, we have come to the end of the session on strings. In the next session, we will be dealing with two dimensional arrays on characters, which we call it as array of strings. This is also one of the most important concept in strings. So we will study it in detail. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you. Have a nice day.